Hello, everybody. Today is April the 9th. Wow, April the 9th already. Today we're doing video number 17, the picket fence. Many of you asked for smaller quilt blocks, so here we go. It's an 8-inch quilt block today. The picket fence with a smaller quilt block sometimes comes with smaller pieces, right? Yes, today we're going to do two little tiny baby flying geese units. I'm going to show you how. I practiced this morning, and if I can do it, you can do it. Here's my little baby flying geese unit. Look how little that is. Just letting you know, there's tons and tons of different ways to make a flying geese unit. I'm going to show you one of those ways and get you really used to using those one eighth increments on your cutting mat. But if you have a different way of making little flying geese units and you want to do that, you are more than welcome to do that. Yes, there's so many different ways you could do it. Let me get this video pulled up so I can keep along with the comments a little tiny bit. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. Just letting you know, we're having some crazy internet this morning. Harlan has been working. He had some conference calls, some meetings online, and the internet has been really wackadoodle today. So I'm hoping that we don't have any interruptions. We'll see how it goes. But right now it looks like the chat is working. If you have any questions, go ahead and try to type them in all caps if you can. Otherwise, I'm just going to come back this evening to read all of the live chat. Every once in a while I see a comment. But uh, yeah, I'm going to pretty much be focusing on all of these little baby pieces today. I do have four questions lined up for today. If you want to play along, that would be fun. And at the end of today's video, I'm going to show you the block and the pieces for tomorrow. Yes. Hello, everybody. So great to see you. Also, uh, Harlan is at Best Buy right now. My third webcam came. So this afternoon, I'm going to set that up so that I can talk to you like this. As I'm working with the pieces, instead of talking to you and looking out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> That's exciting. It's so great to see everybody. So I think we all pretty much came to the conclusion yesterday that this picket fence block would lend perfectly for a border on your quilts or maybe in a row by row quilt, right? And uh, it'd be super adorable in a quilt like this where all the blocks are different, different like a sampler quilt. It's going to be really cute in this quilt layout. However, if you repeat it by itself, unless you just absolutely love picket fences, this kind of looks a little bit like too much picket fence. <laughs> Maybe you're someone who has always adored picket fences and this might be your favorite quilt. We're all different, right? We're all different, but this is what it would look like repeated. I think I'd like to take one of those rows and repeat it as a border on my quilt. I think that would be adorable. Yes, so the pieces are up here. I gave them yesterday. So if you're sewing with me live, hopefully you had a chance to cut those out. <clears throat> Oh, Pamela, you're going to use your picket fences and placemats. That's adorable. Cheryl, I don't know that I got your phone number. Where did you send it to me? I might have seen it. I'm not sure. I get messages from all over the place, y'all. Emails, Etsy, YouTube, Facebook. I might have gotten it, and I just can't recall. Hello, Miss Chantel. Thank you so much for moderating for me today. Hopefully there's no silliness like yesterday, but thank you so much for keeping an eye out on our video. I'm going to take this down off the screen. Let me show you my working mat. These are our pieces. This is the little baby flying geese unit we're going to make. We're going to start off today by making this little unit. Two of them 
I'm going to show you how to do it. If I can do it, you can do it. But like I said, there's several different ways to make a flying geese unit. So if you have a preferred way that is different than what I'm showing in today's video, by all means, substitute the way I'm doing it for your preferred way. Yes. So we have four different questions lined up for today. We're going to start with one of those questions and then we're diving in and starting on this block for today. Our first question for today is a would you rather. Would you rather always for the rest of your days have all the traffic lights that you ever pull up to always be green or never have to stand in a line again for the rest of your days? Always encounter green lights, no red lights. You just keep on driving everywhere you go or you never ever have to stand in another line. Which one would you rather have? And these questions are just like, you know, they're just meant to be fun. <laughs> Play around, have fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me move my water out of the way so I don't spill and make a big mess. The very first thing we're doing today is we're going to make these two flying geese units. To do that, we're going to pull over the one white piece that is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. There should be one of them. We're going to cut this in two ways on both diagonals, okay? So I'm going to line that up right on my mat. I'm going to cut corner to corner. And then I'm going to spin it and we're going to line it back up the other way. Just like this. And we're going to cut from corner to corner. Thank you so much, Miss Namito. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. We're going to cut this block one more time. So the three and a quarter by three and a quarter, we're cutting twice. That's going to give us four. Set those to the side. So we have two white triangles. Then we're going to take the two green ones that are one and seven eighth and one and seven eighth, and we're going to cut them one time, corner to corner. Just going to line that up to the line on my mat. Look how little these triangles are going to be, y'all. Thank you, Miss Hazel. Thank you. This is a Fiskars cutting mat. It's the larger one. It's like uh, 36 by 24. And I got it at Joann's, but they do have them on Amazon as well. And I think that I saw them at Walmart one time. These two 1 and 7 eighths by 1 and 7 eighths squares, we're going to cut it one time right on that diagonal. Just like that. We're using all four of these little baby triangles. They're little baby ones, y'all. So, to make our flying geese units, I'm trying to do this upside down so y'all can see. We're going to take two green ones and put them on either side of the white triangle. Your green triangles have two shorter sides and then one longer side. The longer side is what you match up to the white triangle. Just like that. Now y'all, I am, I'm used to working with big blocks, t-shirt quilts, you know, unless I'm doing a collage style quilt with smaller pieces, 
Usually I'm working like 10 and a half by 10 and a half, 12 and a half by 12 and a half, you know, bigger blocks. <laughs> if I can do this little baby piecing, you can do it. We're just going to take our time and go slow and just try to keep it straight. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and sew our first seam. I like to just take the my marker, flip it down. This time, y'all, I practiced. I practiced on the little baby one <laughs> to keep our flying geese unit straight. We're gonna line up when we flip it over, flip that green one over. We're gonna line up this bottom edge to the bottom of this triangle, okay? Just like that, we're going to sew this seam right here. Thank you so much, Miss Nita. Y'all are so sweet. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. Thank you so much. We're sewing these two seams right there. Go ahead and set your sewing machine up with a quarter inch seam allowance. I have mine ready to go. Let me turn that light on. There we go. That's better. I knew it looked funny. All right, I'm set up with a quarter inch seam allowance. Y'all, thank you so much for doing the super chat. Y'all know that you don't have to, but I appreciate that so much. And most of all, I'm just really glad everybody's here and spending some time with me. We're breaking up our monotonous days, right? I feel like I'm stuck in the movie Groundhog's Day. Except I've been really excited about it because we've been able to get to know each other so well in the past 17 days. <laughs> but yes, we're here to break up the monotony and I'm just really glad everybody's here and hanging out with, with each other. So feel free to have conversations, have fun with the questions, make the block if you want to, but more importantly, just hang out and have fun. So I'm going to bring these two little baby <laughs> flying geese units over and I'm going to sew these two with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to go nice and slow because I'm not used to working with these smaller pieces. See how slow I'm going? There we go, there's the first one. And the second one. So let's go ahead and separate those. So great to see you, everybody. Let's separate those. And you know what? We can go ahead. In the other videos, I wasn't cutting off the little um, dog ears. But you could certainly do that. Let's go ahead and trim the dog ears. Like that. Careful not to cut into that seam. And I like that. Now I'm going to open that up and give that a quick press. I have to warm up my iron. Yeah, so uh, if you're just joining us, our first question was, would you, uh, for the rest of your days, never encounter another red light? So everywhere you drive, all the lights would always be green. Or would you rather always never have to stand in line, like at the grocery store or at the Walmarts, or at the DMV, right? Which one would you rather do? That was our first question.
I'm going to give these two a press. So here we go. There's our first half of our flying geese units. Ah, they're so cute. They're so cute. So now we're going to attach these other, the other two green triangles, right? We're going to flip them. We're going to match up this bottom raw edge to the bottom of the white triangle. The extra little bit is going to be up here at the top. You can mark that with your marker if you want to. This right here, making these flying geese units, is the hardest part of today's block. But if you take your time, you can certainly do it. I'm going to take these over and press them, or sew them. <laughs> As I get ready to sew these two, let's go ahead and ask our second question for the day. This is also a would you rather question. Would you rather have unlimited, unlimited international first class tickets to travel anywhere? So at any time, you could go anywhere first class internationally. Or would you rather have Never have to pay for food at restaurants again. Free eating out forever or free international first class tickets unlimited. Which one would you rather do? Food or travel? I think you kind of know which one I would guess <laughs> or I would say. Glenda, I'm so glad you're not missing the video. Yay. Free tr travel or free food? Y'all know which one I would pick. I'm going to go ahead and sew these other tri two triangles. So there's one. And here goes our second one. So nice and slow, nice and slow. I'm sorry if my hands were in the way. These smaller pieces, I like to have really good control of them as they go through. So the hardest part of this block is all done. Yes, it is. I'm going to go ahead and trim away the little dog ears on this too. Just like that. And like that. Get those little bits off to the side. And now I'm going to give those two triangles a press. In the pressing, it would be real simple to stretch these out of place, right? Be careful you're not stretching when you're pressing. No stretching when you're pressing. There's our little two baby flying geese units. Aren't those cute? They're little tiny ones. They're little tiny ones. So now we can go ahead and lay out this block and I'm going to try my best to lay this out. To me, it'll be backwards, but hopefully to you, it'll be right side up. So let's get our practice one out of the way. And then I'm going to give you a minute to catch up, okay? So let me go ahead and spread out my two flying geese units just like this. 
we're going to take the two two and a half by seven and a half strips just like this that's going to go as the base of our fence post right then we have a six two and a half by two and a half inch squares we're going to lay them out at the top of our fence just like this And then a two will go at the bottom of the block. And two will go in the middle. Just like that. Yeah, that's going to be cute. And then we have four one and a half by two and a half inch pieces. Those go in between our green blocks just like this. And because these pieces include seam allowances, it's going to look a little crazy for a minute because I'm going to spread them out so you see the placement. All of this will come together nice and pretty at the end. So go ahead and lay out your block. Oh, let me scoot that down this way some. There you go, Lisa. Here we go. <laughs> Scooting it down. There we go. Here's the placement for all of your blocks. I'm going to give y'all a minute to catch up. I know that some of y'all are sewing with me live today. So that's the layout. Yes, I would pick the free food. That's just me. <laughs> Let me scan through and see if we have any questions. Oh, I see lots of free food. I do see a few first class tickets. I do see some free traveling in there. Yes. As we begin a piecing this together, this time we're going to piece this block together instead of horizontal rows or going like this. We need to piece these into like vertical rows first, right? So it's going to be super duper simple. We're going to piece the flying geese units here. Just like that. We're going to turn those flying geese units down onto the fence post. And those two seams will be sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're just piecing one by one each one of these pieces. So that's what I'm going to start doing now. I'm going to go ahead and ask the third question. What game have you spent the most time playing? Like Monopoly, Yahtzee, Puzzles. I really like playing, um, oh, of course I would lose it. Give me a second. Nope, it'll come to me. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Canasta. Canasta. I could spend twenty. I could do a twenty-four hour binge playing Canasta. I've probably spent the most time playing Canasta. What game have you spent hours playing? I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing these rows together. I'm gonna start with the two fence posts. We're gonna get those sewn. I'm going to bring over this second one. So here are our two first 
pieces joined. I'm going to give those a press really quick. This black is going to be so cute, y'all. Here's the first fence post. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. There's our two fence posts. Now we're going to spend some time piecing these rows together. Okay, and I'm going to do some chain piecing. So I'm going to flip the first little white piece on top of the green and bring these two units over. We're going to do these first two seams. I want to thank Miss Cornelia for donating the green fabric I'm using today. It's so cute. I did make some face masks with this green fabric too. They were so cute. All right, so I'm going to take these off the machine, but I'm not going to press them yet. We're just going to do some chain piecing as we put these two rows together. Okay, so I'm going to finger press this open just like that. Do a little finger press and we'll press it all nice and pretty in the end. I'll bring over the next green piece and line up those raw edges. I'm going to flip open the next set and just finger press that for the time being. And bring over this green piece. Yes, I love playing Monopoly. I like playing uh, the game of life. That's really fun. Uh, I like playing slot machines on my phone. Right now I'm playing the Game of Thrones slot machine. <laughs> But my favorite all-time game is Canasta. I love freezing the deck. Who plays Canasta out there? If you play Canasta, you know what freezing the deck means. All right, so we're just building our two rows side by side, chain piecing them as we go. I'm gonna flip that open. Oh, look how cute that little fence post is. <laughs> I'm gonna bring over the next white piece. We're gonna add it. Y'all, I think this block would make, if you did it and made this into a quilt border, it would be adorable, right? Flip open this green one, do a little finger press, bringing over this next white piece. And guess what? We have one more green piece to add. Give that a finger press. This is going together pretty quick, right? Line up those raw edges. Open up the next one. Do a little finger press.
And here we go. Okie dokie. We're coming right along. Let me move these to the side. If you chain pieced your rows together, just like I did, you're gonna have all these little connecting threads. I'm gonna go ahead and snip those. We're gonna open that up and give that a press. And I'm just pressing all my seams over to one side you could press them all open if you want to, or to the dark side if you want to. There's our first piece. And our second piece. Oh, let's see. Doing it backwards, Lisa. There we go. And there we go. Now I'm going to give you all a minute to catch up in case you're sewing with me live. Alexis, this video says... Anyone know why it says this video is $17? Where do you see it says $17? That's weird. Maybe I typed the... <laughs> Let me go look at something real quick. I might have... I did the title of the video. Instead of a number sign, I put a dollar sign. <laughs> it's not $17. It's video number 17. I'll have to go in and change that when we're done. <laughs> you caught that one. So to finish this block, y'all, I don't see any questions per se. It might be that uh, if you asked a question, I might be missing it. So feel free to ask again. And if you put it in all caps, it'll be really easy to see. Subliminal messaging. No, that was just me doing one of my typos. <laughs> I do those a lot. So this, this block is going to come together really easy at this point, right? We have three seams to sew, one, two, three, just like that. And so we can go ahead and ask our fourth question. So, all right, I know if, if you were given $5 million, you could probably think of many other things you would do with the money, right? But for this question and for fun purposes only. If you were given $5 million to open a museum, what kind of museum would you open? Now I know with $5 million, we would donate to all kinds of charities, right? This is just a hypothetical question. If someone gave you a check for nothing and said, here's $5 million, you have to open a museum. What kind of museum would you open? That's our last question for the day. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and piece this block together. I'm gonna to take my first fence post and turn it right down. We're gonna sew that seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Yes, Vicki, you play canasta. Free the deck with a two or a joker in canasta. 
I had a feeling a lot of us would say a quilting museum, right? Yes. I'm going to match up the edges on this block and sew that seam. Now you can press these seams as you're making the block if you want to. I'm going to wait until the very end and we'll do a big reveal of the block. I'm just going to open it up just like this and add this strip to this side and sew that seam. Match up that raw edge. You can take your time and get it all lined up at the sewing machine or you can throw some pins in there. Or you can glue baste it. You could do that. All right, so for this block, we have one more seam. I'm just going to do a quick finger press, open that up, and we're adding this third last strip to our block right to the right of this fence post. Gonna turn it down, match up those edges, and we're gonna sew our last seam for this block. I think this block is super cute. I like to just hold the little seams from all of these seams here. Just make sure you hold them down. It'd be real easy just to have those flip up, right? And then they wanna, <laughs> they don't wanna press flat after that. All right, I'm gonna go press this. We'll have our big reveal of the finished fence post block. I think it's so cute. Yes, this is so cute, y'all. It's a cute one. Now, one thing I wanted to show you is because we have all of these smaller vertical seams, my fabrics wanted to press so that uh, it pressed towards the fence post. To me, it just laid out nice and flat that way. So I pressed my seams towards the fence post. Let's flip it over. There is my finished fence post block. Isn't that cute? I'm gonna give this a press one more time. There we go. I think that's super adorable. <laughs> it's so cute. A little fence post. So there's our finished block. If y'all hold on for a second, 
I'm going to show you the block for tomorrow. I want to leave this on the screen in case you're catching up. Now, y'all, I have seen so many quilt blocks over on the Creative Crew group. Just letting you know, if you, if you do Facebook and you haven't joined Creative Crew group, there's a link in the description box below and you can click on that. There are two security questions that you have to answer in order to join the group. And really, it's just us being careful that you're not a spammer. Because <laughs> we've had some try to join up our group. So you have to answer those two questions or we can't join you in. But it's really super duper easy. They're easy questions. You're not judged by them. It's just really super easy questions. But yes, every day since we've been doing this, everyone is sharing pictures of their fence of, of their blocks. It's been so much fun to see. Oh, my parents play cribbage. I never understood the cribbage talk. Two and a one and a seven and a four, two and a nine and an eleven and a twelve, <laughs> whatever the. There's like a cribbage has its own language. Mimsy, by chance, did you miss the first couple of questions? Miss Beverly, let me try to scroll up. Wonder how the quilt would look like with two of the fencing pieces together and on a pole. Hmm. That would look super cute. Miss Beverly, I think you're on to a really great idea. Yeah, play around with it and see what you come up with. I can imagine this as a quilt border on a quilt in a heartbeat. I think that would be fantastic. I think you could do all kinds of stuff with this block. I, I like your idea, Miss Beverly. All right, Miss Mimsy, the other three questions. Let's see. Uh, question number one was a would you rather. Would you rather have all of your traffic lights for the rest of your days be green? So you just drive, no red lights, green lights forever. Or would you rather never have to stand in another line, like at the Walmart, at the grocery store, at the DMV, at the airport, no lines or no red lights? Question number two was, would you rather have unlimited free international first class tickets? You could travel as much as you want, where you want, when you want, or free food at restaurants forever? Travel or food? I'm the food person. And then the third question was, what game have you spent the most time playing? And the fourth question was, if you were given $5 million and told that you had to open a museum with it, what kind of museum would you open? I didn't mean to age you, Miss Vicki. My parents are young. My parents, uh, let's see, I'm 46. My mom is 66. She's still young. But they've been playing cribbage ever since my parents met. So. My parents are young. So that's our finished quilt block for today, y'all. I'm really excited because we found out that my third webcam is at the Best Buy. So Harlan, he went out to the Best Buy to pick up my third webcam. So this afternoon, I'm going to be hooking that up. So now when I'm piecing of these blocks, I get to look at you this way instead of having to turn my head like this. 
This is our finished picket fence block. I hope you shared your blocks with me. I'm going to go ahead and pull up on the screen what you need for tomorrow's block. I don't know if you can hear my bird or not. He's being really grumpy today. I wonder if it's mating season for cockatoos all of a sudden. He's being really grumpy today. If you can hear him in the background, I apologize. The zigzag squares block. This is going to be another 8-inch quilt block. Y'all, tomorrow we're going to be making some half-square triangles. Feel free to cut your pieces bigger or make your half-square triangles in all different kinds of ways and trim them down. We're going to do the same method tomorrow as I did today. We're going to cut the pieces you see on the screen, those 7 eighths blocks. We're going to cut into triangles, and we're going to make half square triangles that way tomorrow. You are more than welcome to make them any way you want. Your measurements will probably change, right? The zigzag squares block. Let me show you what this block looks like repeated as a quilt. Pretty fantastic, right? Uh, I think you could do so much with this block. You could do... Just the two colors, substitute the two colors for whatever colors you want to use. But then, like let's say you're using purple, you could do a light purple block, a dark purple block, a mid-tone purple block, floral purples, striped purples, polka dots, or you could just repeat the same fabric throughout your quilt, right? Or you could do it all different colors. I think this quilt would be pretty stunning all by itself, but this is what we're making tomorrow. I'm going to leave this up on the screen so you have a chance to write that down. Now I'm going to take a sip of water. That's what I like, um, Mimsy, is that you can come back in your own time and watch, right? It's really fun to be here live, but uh, you can come back at any time and rewatch the videos. They're going to always be here. I think this block would look really pretty scrappy. I do. I think it would be beautiful scrappy, but that's just me. <laughs> Miss Vicky, 69 is young. 69 is young these days. Yes. I kind of like that you and your hubby have an age difference. I'm just scanning through to see if I've missed any questions. If I have, I'm really sorry. I can't wait to come back tonight and read all the answers to your questions. I've enjoyed that so much. It's like a treat. I have something to look forward to all day. Diane57, it's so great to see you, and thank you for moderating as well. You took a screenshot. That's really smart. You don't have to go hunt for a pencil really fast. <laughs> screenshot it, and then open it up, and you can cut your pieces, right? This is the block we made today. The little picket fence. Isn't that adorable? That's going to look so cute up on the design wall. This is a cute one. Nita, you're going to make it after work? Yes. That'll give you something to look forward to later, right? Vicki, uh, no, you could split that up in all different colors if you wanted to. I'm just breaking it down so it's easier uh, to see on the screen. And if, you know, a lot of my viewers are brand new to sewing and quilting and they don't have a great big fabric stash, 
you know, lots of different colors to choose from. So sometimes I like to just break it down and use two colors. Keep it simple. But yes, if you want to mix up the colors, go right ahead. It's your quilt block, right? Y'all know me and the rules. I like to break them. If you want to do several different colors, I think that would be amazing. Rochelle, yes, all the blocks you see up behind me, those are all days 1 through 16. Today was our 17th block, the picket fence, and this is the block we're doing tomorrow. So if you're just joining in and you want to go see what all of these blocks look like and how to make them, I'll walk you step by step through it all. And uh, the picture on the thumbnail is the block for that video. And they're all grouped together in a playlist. So if you save the playlist, you can come back to it really fast, scroll through until you see a block that you want to do, and there's the video for it. Erlene, if you go to YouTube and you type in the search bar, uh, cutting a fabric for beginners, all kinds of videos are going to come up. I've seen them, and uh, I think you'll find some really helpful ones that will help you and get you cutting your fabric pretty easily. Right, the green was perfect for this block. And uh, I have used it, let's see, the card tricks block has some of the same green. And so I thought to sort of tie in all this, these quill blocks together, because I've just done random, random fabrics. Uh, the bottom of the block we did yesterday, the little house block is the same green. I thought I'd throw it in a few blocks and so it sort of will start tying all these quilt blocks together a little bit a little bit window box cube boxes are you planning on showing all block pieces that's a lot of patterns each one of each one of these blocks is an individual video. Today is video number 17. So uh, yeah, I'm breaking them down. Each block is a separate video. I really enjoyed spending some time with y'all today. Main purpose of this video was to break up our groundhog days, as I like to think of them. <laughs> Anybody like that movie? I really like that movie, Groundhog's Day. It's kind of like a Groundhog's Day, right? Either that or like the longest weekend ever. It feels like the longest weekend these videos are meant to break that up, meant to be fun. Hopefully we learn something along the way. One thing for sure, y'all, is that each one of these blocks you could find being made probably 10 different ways. We just cover one of the ways. So, um, yeah, hopefully we learned something. If if anything else, we get to hang out and spend some time throughout our day. My goal is just to be a happy distraction. Y'all are so, so welcome. So yes, zigzag squares tomorrow, about the same time. Today, Harlan had some meetings and the internet was acting really funny. So it looks like we've run, we've been really good today. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Internet. Thank you, Lord. We had no issues today. 
And uh, so, yeah, if everything goes according to plan, about the same time tomorrow, we're making zigzag squares. I look forward to seeing you then. And I hope until then you have fun doing something that you love today. Do something that you love today. Take a minute for yourself. That's very, very important. And have fun creating. And you know what? I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for spending some time with me, everybody. Bye.